After six Formula One seasons apart, McLaren and Mercedes will reunite in 2021. The reunion, which will come at the end of McLaren's three-year spell with Renault engines, marks the end of an expensive period of soul-searching for the team. Back in 2014, when McLaren was preparing to part company with Mercedes and switch to Honda, then McLaren boss Ron Dennis said it was not possible to win in F1 as a customer of an engine supplier. But in confirming the McLaren-Mercedes deal that will begin in around 18 months' time, current McLaren CEO Zach Brown said, if we do a very good job, I think we can win. So what's changed? McLaren has not finished on the podium since its final season with Mercedes in 2014, and its winless run stretches back to 2012. That's proof that the rot had started to set in at Woking before its ill-fated move to Honda engines for 2015. For three years from then until 2017, McLaren toiled, often frustrated by an underpowered and unreliable engine. However, when the inevitable happened and McLaren and Honda divorced, McLaren's fortunes did not improve. Its switch to Renault engines in 2018 brutally exposed the team's own deficiencies, which had been hinted at with its initial slump in 2013 and 14, when it was still using Mercedes power. McLaren had to face up to some hard truths, including a major management reshuffle that was completed when Andreas Seidel joined as team principal earlier this year. The first part of McLaren's revival has been rapid, it has launched itself to the front of the midfield in 2019, and Seidel's influence has already become clear. Step one, convince the shareholders to invest in a new wind tunnel. Step two, negotiate a return to Mercedes engines. Mercedes has dominated the V6 turbo hybrid era and is on course for a sixth consecutive drivers and constructors championship double. It would not be possible to have sustained that success if the engine was still not up to the job, so McLaren knows it is switching to a tried, tested, powerful and reliable product. However, the engine is not exactly McLaren's biggest issue as it lags behind Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull. But the wider deficit to the big three is a big reason McLaren believes a move to Mercedes engines makes so much sense. Mercedes chassis has been its biggest weapon in F1 this year and the race team is one of the sharpest. McLaren wants that all-round benchmark so it knows exactly what is lacking in its bid to return to the top. Seidel says the best thing McLaren can do is have the same engine as the best team in F1, so it has nowhere to hide. From Mercedes' side, this is possible now because its attitude has shifted as the V6 turbo hybrid era has developed. Mercedes boss Toto Wolff described it as a move with many pros and one risk, that being that if McLaren does a good job, they could give the works team some headaches in the future. Brown said Mercedes' position as the benchmark engine is part of the appeal for McLaren, but that overlooks the fact Ferrari has overhauled Mercedes on the engine side. However, as well as the fact Mercedes is a better all-round package than Ferrari, it is also a much less problematic partnership for McLaren. Brown said Ferrari would be a clear brand clash with McLaren on the road car side, and Mercedes is less problematic in that regard, so McLaren never considered Ferrari engines. Likewise, McLaren said it never considered building its own engine because it would cost too much to develop and would take too long to make competitive. As for staying with Renault, it appears the French manufacturer wanted a more aligned relationship if it was to continue supplying another team. This may have included shared parts and a shared gearbox. McLaren was less interested in this and was keen to strike a simple engine supply deal to retain its independence. This is why Wolf and Brown were both keen to stress this is purely a customer arrangement, not the beginning of a return to McLaren Mercedes work status or the withdrawal of Mercedes' own team. Oh, and just in case you wondered, McLaren's exclusive deal with Honda resulted in a costly divorce, and nobody was interested in patching that relationship back up.